Given that a particle is thrown into the air with an initial velocity of u and an angle of alpha to the horizontal, find the general equations of the following. The time to find the maximum height, the maximum height of its path, the time of its flight, the range of its flight, and the equation of its path. Okay, it's useful to know these things in their sort of general form with no numbers. So let's have a look. First of all, let's draw a diagram. So we've got initial velocity u and angle alpha to the horizontal. So this will be the path of the parabola. There's no vertical velocity uh, at the maximum at the maximum height. This will give the maximum height and here the vertical height will be zero which will give and if you put that, the time that we get for that x into r we get the actual time of its flight and therefore we can find the range so if we put the time in, we can find the range of the flight. So we've got gravity acting that way downwards. So setting up the equations of motion for velocity, we use v is equal to u plus at. V of x will be u times cos of uh, x. So it will be the, this, this component here. There's no gra a gravity on acting on it, and the y component will be u sine alpha, which is the initial velocity, which is this component here, minus g of t, okay, because gravity is actually acting on the vertical component of the velocity. So the position will be s is equal to ut plus a half at squared. So we've got x is going to be equal to ut cos alpha because, again, there's no gravity acting in the horizontal uh, direction. And y will be ut sine alpha minus g over 2 t squared. There is gravity acting on it. And obviously, because gravity acts downwards, it's minus. So we'll call those equations 1, 2, 3, and 4. We'll write them out again here. I'm just going to speed that up a bit. So a, the maximum height v y is equal to zero from equation two this one here the velocity u sine alpha minus gt will be equal to zero u sine alpha is equal to gt t will be equal to u sine alpha over g this is time to reach it reach the maximum height substituting t into equation four We have equation 4 is the position, so that will actually give me the vertical height, the vertical position at that particular time. So we have u times t, which is u sine alpha g, sine alpha minus g over 2, u sine alpha g all squared. Simplifying that, we're going to have u squared sine squared alpha over g minus u squared sine squared alpha over 2g. A g will cancel with a g squared there. Putting over a common denominator, we get 2u squared sine alpha, sine squared alpha minus u squared sine squared alpha over 2g. So multiplying this one here by 2. So that gives me, if you've got 2 take away 1 lot, it gives me just 1 lot. So what u squared sine squared alpha over 2g will be the maximum height in terms of u and alpha. Writing those out again, I'll just speed that up a bit. For the time of flight, okay, we've got, what we've got to remember is here, at this particular point, y is equal to 0, x is equal to r. So we take this one here, this equation 4. So using equation 4, we put it equal to 0. So we've got ut sine alpha minus g over 2, t squared is equal to 0. Factorizing out of t, we've got that u sine alpha minus g over 2, t is equal to 0. That's obviously going to give t is equal to 0, which puts the starting position. So we weren't interested in that because we wanted this one. So, or u sine alpha minus g over 2, t is equal to 0. u sine alpha is equal to g over 2 times t. t will be equal to 2u sine alpha over g. This is the time of flight. To get its the actual range of flight, we put that into equation 3.
so we've got x is equal to ut cos alpha, so it's going to be u times the value of t, which is 2u sine alpha over g times cos alpha, which is 2u squared sine squared cos squared over g. Now, 2 sine alpha cos alpha is the same as sine 2 alpha from your pure mathematics. So we're going to have the u squared sine 2 alpha over g is going to be the range of the flight. Right, to actually find the trajectory of the, the equation of the trajectory of the particle, so taking an equation of the path, this is what we're trying to find here, from 3, t is going to be x over u cos alpha. Okay, so we've got a parameter of t, so we've got to sort of eliminate it. Substitute into 4, we're going to have that y is going to be u times x over u cos alpha sine alpha minus g over 2 x u cos alpha all squared, so substituting that into there, this into there. So that's going to give x sine alpha cos alpha minus g x squared over 2u squared cos squared alpha. The u's cancelled out here. Sine alpha over, over cos alpha is the same as tan alpha. So we're going to get x tan alpha minus g x squared over 2u squared cos squared alpha. Sex squared alpha is equal to 1 minus tan squared alpha. And then sex squared is 1 over cos squared is equal to 1 plus tan alpha. So this will now become, the equation of the path will now become x tan alpha minus g x squared over 2u squared g x squared over 2u squared and then 1 over cos alpha will become 1 plus tan alpha. You get it all in terms of tan alpha. So but there we've got the equation path in terms of x and alpha and the initial velocity.